Hello everybody, Jeffrey Bartel here, and today I'm going to be doing a game gameplay video in tribute to That's right. This this game this gameplay video is going to be in tribute to the U.S. Coast Guard because it's the United States Coast Guard's 230th anniversary. So happy birthday to the United States Coast Guard. 230 years strong. <laughs> I wanted to do that. Uh, any any since 19. Since 1790, the long two hundred thirty years. <laughs> Any, anyway, anyway, so the, the game I'm gonna be playing is Storm, is Stormworks. Since it's how do you, how do you say relate, related to the game, related to the game, relate related to the game that I'm gonna be playing gonna be playing in the, the Coast Guard. It's a it's a Coast Guard related game in short. So so without further ado let's get let's get start start to it. Hold on. I feel like I missed forgetting something. But what is it? Hmm. What is it I'm forgetting? I feel like I'm forgetting something. What is it? Hold on. One. One minute. One minute, please. Please, I think I can. It's 
Sorry if you're sorry if you're being patient. Sorry if you're getting impatient, but uh, hold on a second. I'm still I'm trying to figure. I don't want to start this video, start the gameplay until I exactly remember what I was trying. Exactly remember what I was wanted to, wanted to say because I know it's extreme, extremely important. Now, now I, now, ah, now, now I remember, it's, it's this. One happy birthday dot com. That's right. Today, today is also Barack Obama's birthday. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of funny, funny, funny when you think about, think about it. His birth, because Trump, Trump's birthday coincides with U.S. Army Day, and Barack Obama's birthday coincides with U.S. Coast Guard Day. Do you find that off? Do you find that a little awkward or not or not? Any. Anyway, today the 40 the 44th president is now 55 years 55 years old different today. So this so this is his 59th birthday. So be sure to get. So be sure to say hi. So if you ever meet me in person. So if you can, so if you ever want to. So if you ever see him or, you know. Meant. See him and talk to talk to him or what? Email him, write him a letter or whatever. Be sure. Of the, today, be sure to say happy birthday. But down. But down to more pressing matters. <laughs> do you miss? Do you miss me yet? It's time. It's time. It's time to start the gameplay. You ready? You ready? You ready?
Sorry, having a little trouble with the head. I was having a little trouble there with the headphones. And I was trying to say that in, uh, you know, I wish I could do sign language, but I couldn't. <laughs> but I can't. Anyway, here we go. And for the record, this is my first time playing this game, so wish me luck. Wish me luck on how to get through it. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let let's let's begin. Something's wrong. Not getting the window. Let's restart the count. Let's restart that the countdown again. Try. I think I might have got it, but I just I need to be sure. Okay. Let's restart. Let's restart this thing. Starting. Now. Here we go. All set, ready to go. Now, also while during my, I don't know if you can hear me, but uh, can you hear me? I don't know if you can, but if you can't hear me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say I'm also, I'll also be talking about the history of the U.S. Coast Guard while during the gameplay. Take 
Okay. Renzo Wil Wil Whitlocks. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Better? Or worse? I'll take your comment as that that's good with that's good with the green assault to begin. Now, this is my first time playing this. I think ocean plants will be enabled too. Here we go. Okay, here we go. for the tip. Will talks to you. Do you like the Do you like the customized difficulty? Is it good to you know currently? Okay. 
Okay. I wonder where this world seed thing is. time weather control menu. stuck at 90 percent do you know I only have five hours and 36 minutes to play. To play, I'm only gonna play play this game for six hours. Six hours only. I'm gonna see the problem. Maybe it needs more. Maybe it needs more space.
Hang on, I'm gonna clean. I'm gonna try to. Hang on, try to do some clean. I'm gonna try to do some clean. I know nothing else is open, so it should work. Let me see. But let me try. Let me try anyway. I hate to waste the whole six hours just trying to get this thing to work. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, yeah, you're you're right. And it wasn't responding when, especially when I closed it. So I'm gonna try. So I'm trying again. You weren't supposed to see that. Let me try again. I hate to have the beast. Okay, before I, let me go to here to make sure I can, you know. What's this? Maybe that's, maybe that's it. I think I got it.
Oh. Maybe that was just a test. Maybe that's just a test, never mind. Let's try bet let's try the test test on this. Benchmark one, let's try. Hmm. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good, don't you think? I think I think so, probably. All right. Let's just try number two. So this is what it's like in a snowstorm. You know, there are people I like to play with on here. Komodo, Komodo Gaming. Komodo Gaming. Spy Cakes. The fame... Many famous... Famous player... Many famous player, players on Stormworks. I like to play play with them. Okay, I think it looks good. I wonder if the last one's the same thing. I think if it were this should work, then I should then I think it should, you know work work with the actual thing what do you do you think let's take a look night rain Looks good. Doesn't it? Render. Coast Guard ship. Oh, there's another boat on there. Okay, I think. All right. All right. I think it's good. So now let's try. What 
wonder why. Let's see the enable the playlist again. All right. All right, Ape. Might try the limited fuel later on. But not now. So let's do this. Let's hope it works this time. Cross, cross your fingers. You know, again, I would hate to have to spend, be spending my whole day trying to, trying to get this game to work. Working. Use is getting quieter. Yes, it worked finally. Okay. Character. Yeah, mail. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I have blood. Okay, black. No, those eyebrows look ugly. They're bushy and... That's it. Two. Three. Well, that's the closest to my, my current eyebrows. Hey. No, that looks dumb. Trousers. Hmm. Maybe the boots would be good. Trousers. But what color should they be? What goes well with? Hey, what go? Hey, what goes well with um? Hey, what goes? Hey, what goes well with blue?
I mean, I'm having trouble just trying to think of what the f they hate. Oh, it's there. Is that all? Too, too dark. Nah. What do you, what do you think, Ren, Renzo Wiltox? Black? This gray, this gray, this gray, this gray, or white. Hard to tell. Road two fifty. Okay. This one. Or this, or this one. Number one or number two? Number one or number two? If you look closely, there's a difference. Number one, number two. Two? All right. Look funny with, but I, but I look better with boots. I think the black boots would be would good. Alrighty. Captain's hat. What the? <laughs> that's fu- What? Oh, that's funny. No, not a knife patch. Oh, no way. This is- Whoops. Mm, do I? Let's see. Life jacket. Lab coat. Aviator jacket. Like that one. Hazmat suit. <laughs> Straps? No. No. Maybe this, maybe the aviator jacket. Okay. 
Let's see. Zoom kind of Hmm, it's most likely they're more, more common in this color. <laughs> I look like a pilot for sure, don't I? <laughs> But I, well, but this is about. Hmm. Is there any color for the pilot mask, or is it just the gas mask? Yeah, it's only the gas mask that's the color. Let's see. Yeah, it's mostly white, so... I wish I had more. I could, wish I could make myself look like a Coast Guard... Coast Guard person. Wonder... Well, I got the look of a. Well, I got the look of a. Well, that's two out of, two out of two. So maybe that's maybe that's good. Maybe that's good. So what do you? So what do you think of my my look? What do you think of my look now? Hold on. But I wish, in honor of Coast Coast Guard Day, I could make myself look like a look like a Coast Guard, look like look like a Coast Guard person. Hmm. Still, can you wait? Wait. There's one person. There's one other person I want to get opinion from. Wait, wait there. Let me 
me see. Maybe that, yeah, it's, I think that's better. I think that long sleeve is better. All right, looks sharp. Now I think the long sleeve shirt is better. Don't you think? Can you still, can you hear me? Sometimes, let's see. Blue goggles on, what? What if, yeah, I hate to do it, but it looks more authentic. So, I guess that's my character. It's hard, it's hard for me to tell the volumes. It's hard for me to tell the volumes though, because I'm in trouble. It's not that, so. Okay. Here we go. How do I... EQ. Oh. So that opens the door. How do I change my view? Alright, so how do how do I change my how do I change my I want to change view viewpoints. Well, didn't mean to do that. There we go. Bed. <laughs> okay. How do I, ch oh, thank you. Oh, I could change my wardrobe any time. But, uh, but, I, but I'm gonna go out like this for right now. Let's see, E. Okay, lights off. Okay, where to? Okay. Okay.
Jan in Jan January of eight January first of eighteen oh nine Congress the law passed by Congress in eighteen oh seven prohibiting the the ooh <laughs> the importation of facilities in the unit in the U in the U into the US went into effect. The revenue cutter service enforced the law on high seas. So what so what now? I'm on an eye. So what now? Do I even have a boat? Where do I go from here? But the view is beautiful. How do I get down? Whoop. Shoo! I mean, I'm in survival. <laughs> Oh man, that would have been a nasty fall. That would have been a nasty fall. Okay. So, that's my home. Where to from here? Don't these guys run faster? Or is it just me? Well, down here. Okay. Oh, there's a, there's a thing over here. Wow. Look at that. Actually, let's see if I can. I wonder if I can get a ship in here. Well, I just shut shut myself in here. I can't swim to the nearest island. What am I, what do I do? What was this? Oh. That was, it must have been a debug thing. I created my character, but what am I supposed to do now? I got no boat. I got no boat to get off the to get off the island. What about the I'll crouch. Okay. Light. Where's the control panel to this thing? Ah, here it is. Floodlight. Don't want to waste energy, so let's turn it off. Close look. I can get away from anybody. I can't get away from anyone, let alone. What's this? A J button. That's jump. Am I on the wrong side of the island? 
Transfer oil rig is fitted for the airport to the clam, clam company rig. That's the map. Where's the starting point? Where am I? That's right. But where's the mission? Coast Guard Outpost Beginner. Maybe that's where I'm supposed to go or somewhere, something. M's for map. Wait a minute. This is where I was. So what do I do? And, okay, where is it? What the, holy crap, how do I get there? That's not it. Center flare. I don't have a boat. How do I get there? Oh, maybe, maybe this might be, maybe this might be something. Wait. That's all I got. I didn't realize that all this stuff costs. Have any idea what I'm supposed to do? Well, I already researched these pieces. So what now? Where, so what now? And how do I get there? What's the... Uh... I never took a took a look at that took a deep look at that thing. What is it? Dock panel edge. Large win large winds. Grab fluid connector connect. And when I'm so now what? How am I supposed to get to my mi first mission if I don't have a boat? You got...
What's this thing? Maybe this might help. Oh, it found the create vehicle thing. Okay. Let me get something simple. This might... Let me get something simple. I need to... Because I really need to get, how do you say, over there. And I don't know, and I don't know if I could fl and I don't know if, okay, maybe just a helicopter. This might be simple enough. Doggone it. That's not what I wanted. Control to eyedrop components. Had to focus. Maybe just a boat then. What do you mean too big? Man, never knew that create, trying to create a vehicle would be this tip difficult. Oh, never mind. Let's see. Okay. Logic. Got to be a small one. This vehicle was built with the advanced vehicles. Just to save it. You're currently playing with advanced view. Oh, 
Okay. I need to get to that mission, whatever. And I don't have the time to, you know. I don't have the time to try to fill the vehicle. It might take hours. Here it goes. Oh crap. There we go. How do I get in this thing? F. Now. Is this what I mean? Is this thing in How do you steer this thing? How do you how do you get this thing working? Whoops. I need to turn it around. How do I do that? What's this? Never realize. Whoops, again, I didn't mean to do that. What am I supposed to do? It's supposed to be pointing the other way. And it's not supposed to be so... Any, any advice what I should do, Fief? Toggle the red. Just a boat.
Oh, that's not gonna do. I'm really stuck here. Yeah. Dang. I never realized how hard it was. I never realized how hard it was to... J Dang, I never realized how hard it was. Man. Oh, there we go. That's how you do it. That's how you rotate. Wish there was another base I could Man. I'm really sucking at this right now. Well, this. I'm just getting desperate. Okay. Ah, uh, here we go. This is just okay, this is just embarrassing. If I don't get it under control soon, I'm gonna. S come on, come on, come on. Well, I guess that's. Wait. 
Well, I'm out of sea. Now what? Oh. At this rate, I'm going to get nowhere fast. I might have got it started, but this is just... I'm just going around in circles. Man, what a waste that was. Whoops. I didn't mean to do that. Let's try to let's try another small view because I don't. At this rate, I'm gonna get nowhere fast. What am I supposed to do? Swim? I don't think so. And how am I supposed to increase the edit area? Just wish there was a way to magically teleport me there. Wonder what's on this island.
Any ideas? Anybody? Ugh. Uh, could never imagine that this could this could feature. I guess I'm supposed to explore more more area. Fast travel location, but how am I supposed to build a boat? What's that? This is tough. From in from me. Maybe that was the reason. Oh, here's something. Let's see if this works. Oh. 
Okay. Hey, I know this place. It's where you know who was. Komodo Gaming. Ah, and it's much faster now. Conserve energy. Now, where is that? Now, how do I get... Broken down train. Wait a minute. Where is it? For once, can it be somewhere in the, not in the middle of the... Well, hopefully that this... Well, hopefully this time I'll be able to in. There's the light switch. Wait a minute. Did I forget to close the door up here? I'll always be courteous. Wait a minute, how did I get in here then? There's the door. No door handle, figures. And this place? Oh, I got a TV. A wardrobe. Bed. Bunk beds. Let's get down to the bottom. Wrong door. That's better. Now I feel like I'm running like a king. Let's see. Oh, big T. Oh, big TV. Is that a game station? A computer. Where's the works where's the workstation? How am I supposed to how am I supposed to spawn something if I don't know? There it is. Okay. 
I got a coast. I finally got a coast guard vehicle. How do I get in this thing? How do I get in this thing? Stretcher. Okay. I'm in now. Okay, what what should I how do I Where's this where's the key? Oh figures, that's how they get out of here. Okay. Now where are I? That's not it. Where's the plastic key? How do you... How do you turn this... There's autopilot. Nose camera, winch camera. How do you turn this blasted thing on? Let's try this seat, see what. Winch hoist. Wheel brake, deploy flare. Which is, that was the main, that was the main power box. I hate to start by, wait. Here we go. Okay, got the... Wait, what did I just click on? Man, why do they have a kill switch there? Okay. Wheel lock. Let's see. Oops. Well, I found the. Hmm. 
Uh, here we go. Now we're now we're cooking with gas. Whoa. Oh shoot! 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 Fly out. Oh! Dang it! Let's try that again. <laughs> Well, the question is how to get it moving. Okay. That's how. Now. Okay. Wheel brake. One of these controls has to be get get me get me get me moving. How am I supposed to get out of here with it? But it's still being still being locked in this up it. Okay. Man, I can't believe I gotta write this down. Negative X, negative four, four, three, six point six Y, one, zero, two, five, five, two point nine. Okay. If I could get these road. Turbine.
Ah, how do I get? How do I get this frickin' thing moving? Kind of getting nowhere here. Come on, get out of there. Oh man, not again. Ah. You really need to come up with instructions. You really need to come up with instructions. Maybe I should try something a little easier. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Maybe I should try something a little easier. Uh, here. Like easier to f control. There has to be another dot, another another building spot around here somewhere. Hmm. Well, that's there. Let me let me go over here and see what see if there's anything at the dock. Man, I just have drones are trying to control these. See if there's anything at the dock. Oops, wasn't paying attention to where I was, where I was going. Great. How am I gonna get out of this? Wasn't paying attention to the land around me. What did I click on? I hate to have to swim all the way there. Seriously, who would hate to have to swim all the way there? 107. Can you even can you even swim 107 point kilometers? I don't think I could. I can't. I know I can't. <laughs> how do I how do I get out of this? See. 
Oh, left control. There we go. I wonder if I found it works. Is that a, is that a swordfish? Oh, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Uh, I drowned. Ow. Wait a minute. I had a flashlight. How do I turn that off? Left shift for sprint. V. There. I'm sprinting! Wee! I finally know how to. This, this is the makeshift runway. I think I'm going in the wrong direction. I think I'm going in the wrong direction. Coast Guard Outpost. about to find a find a shipbuilding area. Yeah, I found one. Okay. Okay, let's get a ship. Let's get a ship down. Let's get a coast guard ship. Okay. Okay, this is basic. Okay. Throttle. Now what's wrong? Now what's wrong? It's not moving. It's with the
Why am I not moving? Okay. Gears. Ah, here we go. Okay, I wonder if I can set this thing to autopilot. Let's see. I wonder if there's a bed in here. There's a bathroom. Okay. Wait a minute, am I going... Oh, storm, gotta get up. Where's the... There. I failed to broke it down train mission, but let's see what I can... It's my eye, it's my home eye. Right there. Ugh. Okay, that should be good.
Where the... Where am I? That must be the key to start this thing. Is that the horn right? It's not. I'm getting no. Man. Is it March 31st? How much farther? Well done. Wait, did, if that's the activist, what's this? If I continue at this pace, I'm going to collide with that island.
Anybody read me? You know, I hate to jump off this thing and, then <laughs> and be stranded in the middle of the... Well, that boat's ready, ready without me, that, you know... Two point seven kilometers. I'm getting closer. Ah. Another refueling station right over here. Wonder how much fuel I got. Rope anchor. Now I feel like a real Coast Guard. Coast Guard soldier. Okay. There. I was kind of getting sick of the rain anyway. How much closer? Not that far. I'm almost on top of it. Okay. Okay, we're here. What the?
Now what? Oh, I almost went overboard. Okay, now what? See where this way goes. I need to try and find some scuba gear. No, it's firefighting equipment. That's thermal gear. Another bed. Same here. Well, here's the kitchen. Must be. The door's the door's stuck. I'm back where I started. Am I stuck in here now? Now what? Am I stuck inside my own ship? Doors are jammed. They killed power to the filth. No power at all. I'm stuck. I'm stranded and stuck inside my own. Well, at least things can't get any worse, right? I'm stuck in... What's that? Oh, crap. I gotta get this... I gotta get this bird up and... I gotta get this ship... Ship back up and... Back up on all cylinders somehow. I'm still stuck in here.
I would do this. Tsunami. Tsunami coming in. I can't get the. Is there a P button assigned? Doesn't look like it, so maybe... Whoops. Let's see if there's a C. A control? No, no. <laughs> Don't see a C. Okay. I am gonna Let's get this kill. Let's get this ship. Oh we're going oh Oh boy Ah 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 Did we survive? Did we survive? I can't get out of this ship. Oh, we survived. Thank God. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't get this city. Oh, I'm stuck in here. My ship's dead in the water. I'm straight. I'm stuck. Nothing else. There's nothing I could do. I don't think I could do it.
Man. I am stranded in the middle of the middle of the I am stranded and stuck. I can't imagine this thing getting I'm stuck here and, and not, nothing's working. I'm stranded. In, I'm stuck inside my... I need rescuing. What the? What the hell? Did it just get? Oh boy! Here we go. You think I'm gonna? Capsized. Oh. Wow. I died. Where am I now? Fast travel location.
Let's see. Where am I now? Whoa. Some place. What can exactly... Maybe I could spawn a helicopter. To get me off this... Uh... Okay. Where is it? What? Oh, that's just... Oh, that is just wrong. How am I supposed to get up there? Where am I? Whoa. High tower. I wonder if it's high enough. Yeah, I hope it is. So who wants to bet I can I'll make it through this? Here it comes. Oh crap. Well, that was pretty Well, that was pretty intense, but it wasn't high enough. Where this is. Let's see where this goes. Oh, rock climbing. Look at that. Nice. This is a helicopter launching area. Let's see if I can... Now let's see if I can actually spawn the helicopter. Oh... Too big. Uh, well, I mean, no, this will do. Where is it? Oh, the pad. Okay. Okay, how do I... I 
I'm missing something. It's not work. Yeah. Hold target altitude. There we go. Now if I could just get this bird off the ground. I'll be a happy camper. Although I'm a little nervous. <laughs> oh. Wait, did I? W? No, that's not it. Up, down. There we go! A little lower. I think the wind's affecting my. Hmm. No, 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 no. Ugh. Let's get back here. Oh. Negative, negative six, one, zero, eight point zero, negative four, nine, six, two point seven. Okay. Okay, where's the autopilot? That's not it. Holy shit! Oh, I can't believe how fast I fell. I drowned. Dang, I can't believe how fast I... I can't believe how fast I just, just, just drowned like that.
One's got to be a helicopter. Let's go here. Man, maybe I should get a joystick or something. Oh yeah, I almost forgotten. I was supposed to talk about the... I almost forgotten. I'm so, I got so caught up in this game, game, I almost forgot to talk about the history of the United States Coast Guard. It goes back to the United States Re Revenue Cutting S Cutter Service, which was founded on August 4th, 1790, as part of the Debar Department of the Treasury. The Revenue Cutter Service and the United States Life Saving Service were merged to become the Coast Guard per 14 US U USC, which states the Coast Guard as established as established as establishment as established as established January January 28 1950 shall be a military service and a branch of the armed forces of the United States at all times. Here's the panel. No, that's the lights. How, how do I get out of here? Can you get, can you get it for me? Uh, seven ish. That must be the door panel. No, it's just the lights. If I make a vehicle, how am I going to get it out of here? Let's see if I can... I don't know how am I going to get a... If a plane spawns in here, I don't know how am I going to get it out. There we go. Now where is... See what I mean? See what I mean? How am I going to get it out of here? If I can't get the door open. Would it even fit out the wind? Well, I could just... I could just take a look inside. Medical bed. Ah. 
parachute. Okay. I feel like... I kind of feel like those guys on that one mission. But I don't think this is a... I think this is a team... It's a team one. Okay. See what I mean? You see what I mean? If I can't get the... If I can't get out the door, how am I going to get out? This one seems... Okay. Now... Okay, it's an aircraft carrier, so how do I... Okay. Okay. It's like a faucet. Clutch. Oh. Can't believe I can. Where am I? Is the cockpit on that side? Must be. Sliding door. I don't know how to open those. Scoop of gear. Just imagine if someone had this in their arsenal. The control panel has to be... It has to be here somewhere. What's down here? Where 
Where am I? I'm going deeper into the sub. This must be the aircraft hangar. But there are no aircraft in here. That stinks. Here's the aircraft hangar. But I'm, what I'm looking for is the bridge. They both lead to the same thing. No, I'm gonna sit through this. Oh, passenger seat. What a friggin' big submarine. And a bed. But right now I gotta find the bridge. I didn't mean to do that. Where is the bridge? That's the exit. This must be it. Isn't it? I hate to have to go all the way to the other side. To get it this to get in it's another ladder here let's see where this goes Whew. okay So this leads to something. Or did I already been here? Whoa, TV! Oops, didn't mean to do that. What I wanted to know where the bridge was. Let's see. Way to pilot this thing. Drive it. I mean to say. That's the bridge right there. Has to be. That's the bridge, it has to be. Yep, that's it. Now to get to it. That's the bridge. I was, I just can't believe how close that was to me. Oh, almost close to my face. Which one's the... Uh, I can't see without the... T Signal flare. Okay, how do I start this thing?
That's better. There we go, and I can see better. Without a key, I can't. Without a key, I can't. Port thrust. Where's this? Where's this blasted thing? Oops, didn't mean to do that. Wait a minute. We're moving. But the, oh, the glare. That's so bright. That's better. I wonder if something like this could actually work, or is it impossible? Hey. Here we go, we're diving. I think we are anyway. We're diving tail first. Not all not all at once. See, will it dive now? Now we're going.
Okay, we're moving. Is that a shark? Are we stuck? I think we are. Need to surface a bit. I think if I need to put it in reverse. stuck down here I can I stuck? Am I stuck? How deep am I? Does that make a difference?
I can hardly see out the out the camera anymore. I can't tell where I am. Can't believe this. Oop. Oh, man. Am I stuck in here now? Well, this part's already flooded. Okay. I'm out of here. Oh, I died even with a scuba suit. Do you think I can make it by jumping? Oh wait, am I facing the wrong way? Oh. Wait a minute. This is a tiny version of the shit freaking ship. Not exactly what I'm... How big is this ship? Why is it so small? Oh man! It really did sink. 
but that's not what I was hoping for. That's not what I was hoping for at all. Let's try this. Now how do I get in this thing? That might be it. Now how do I close it behind me? Is this it? I need to see the interior. Getting in is one thing. How do I get? Where's the controls? I was standing on them. I was freaking standing on them. Freaking standing on it. Now how do I close the hat? There we go. Where's the monitor in this thing? I can't even see. If Ah, uh, here we go.
Okay, now we're talking. I'm going for it. Do you think I'm gonna? What do you think is gonna happen? I have something. Whoop! That's the button. Jaws! Woo! Oh, uh, <laughs> and now I'm stuck upside down. <laughs> Wait. Finally going underwater. No, not. Wish this thing could dive. Oh, right. I didn't travel that much, just down this way. That stinking thing.
Let's see here. Where am I? Whoa. I wonder how big of a thing can I make? Oh, giant size. See where this thing will go. Seriously. Wait a minute. Is it me or how am I supposed to get to it? Oh. See where I go here. More. Am I? I'm on the island again. If only I could oh, get those doors open in this one, then I could really take off in a plane. Runaway should lead me somewhere. What now? You know, if I had to choose this between war, that and the war, World at War series, you know, World of Tanks, World of Warships, World of Planes, I choose that. I choose that over the this because this is this is not not as easy as it looks.
Because unless I get to get the find a way to get those doors open, there's no way I could get the. Does anyone have any ideas? I am so stupid. Well, I'm gonna... Well, it is dinner... Well, it's dinner time by my book, so... I'm gonna eat, so... What are you saying? In the meantime,
1867. After the purchase of Alaska in 1867, USRC Lincoln, with First Lieutenant George W. Moore aboard was dispatched to Sitka to establish United States sovereignty as agent of the U.S. Collector of Customs in San Francisco. Lincoln was directed to make early history at its source. The Revenue Marine at its source. The modern Coast Guard was created in 1915 by the merger of the United States Revenue Cutter Service right, and the United States Life Saving right. Service, but its roots go back to the early days of the Republic. Secretary of the Treasury Alexander ha The modern Coast Guard was created in 1915 by the merger of the United States Revenue Cutter Service and the United States Life Saving Service, but its roots go back to the early days of the Republic. Secretary of the Treasury Alexander Hamilton lobbied Congress to authorize a system of cutters to enforce tariffs, which was major source of revenue for the new nation. On August 4, 1790, now recognized as the Coast Guard's official birthday, Congress passed the Tariff Act, permitting the construction of 10 cutters and the recruitment of 40 revenue officers. Each cutter was assigned one master and three mates who were commissioned officers. In addition, each cutter was allowed four mariners and two boys. One the cutters were collectively referred to as the Revenue Marine and was not a centrally organized service. Each revenue cutter operated independently with each assigned to patrol a section of the East Coast and reporting directly to the Customs House. In a major port. From 1790, when the Continental Navy was disbanded, to 1798, when the United States Navy was created, these revenue cutters were the country's only naval force to as such, the cutters and their crews took on a wide variety of duties beyond the enforcement of tariffs, including combating piracy, rescuing mariners in distress, ferrying government officials, and even carrying mail. In 1794, the Revenue Marine was given the mission of preventing trading in slaves from Africa to the United States. Between 1794 and 1865, the service captured approximately 500 slave ships. In 1808, the service was responsible for enforcing President Thomas Jefferson's embargo closing U.S. ports to European trade. The 1822 Timber Act tasked the Revenue Cutter Service with protecting government timber from poachers, this is viewed as the beginning of the Coast Guard's environmental protection mission. Dot 3. During times of war or crisis, the Revenue Cutters and their crews were put at the disposal of the Navy. The Revenue Marine involved in the Quasi War with France from 1798 to 1799, the War of 1812, West Indies Anti-Piracy Operation and the Mexican-American War. United States Revenue Cutter Service at its source. Seal of the United States Revenue Cutter Service. The service was first officially referred to as the Revenue Cutter Service in a law passed by Congress in 1863, but the service was also known interchangeably with the Revenue Marine until about 1894 during the American Civil War. USRC Harriet Lane fired the first naval shots of the war engaging the steamer Nashville during the siege of Fort Sumter 5 President Lincoln invoked Act of March 2, 1799, which allowed him to order the revenue cutters to combat duty with the Navy. Lincoln directed the Secretary of the Treasury on June 14, 1863, to assign the revenue cutters to the North Atlantic Blockading Squadron 6 revenue cutter officers who left the revenue cutter service and joined the Confederacy retained their commissions, and on December 24, 1861 the Confederate Congress authorized the President to employ the officers in any naval or military capacity. Some joined the Army and Navy, but some continued as revenue cutter officers serving the Confederacy 7. After the purchase of Alaska in 1867, USRC Lincoln, with First Lieutenant George W. Moore aboard was dispatched to Sitka to establish United States sovereignty as agent of the U.S. Collector of Customs in San Francisco. Lincoln was directed to make a reconnaissance of the coastline 8910 in the 1880s through the 1890s, the Revenue Cutter Service was instrumental in the development of Alaska. Captain Hell Roaring Michael A. Healy, captain of the USRC Bear, greatly assisted a program that brought reindeer to Alaska to provide a steady food source for native Eskimos 1112 during the winter of 1897-1898, 1st Lt. David H. Jarvis, 2nd Lt. Ellsworth P. Berthulf of the Revenue Cutter Service and Surgeon Samuel J. Call, Public Health Service drove a reindeer herd across 1,500 miles in the Overland Relief Expedition to help starving whalers trapped by ice near Point. 
Barrow. Congress awarded the three men congressional gold medals. Four heroic service rendered on June 28, 1902. Thirteen during the Spanish-American War USRC Hudson assisted the U.S. Navy during the Second Battle of Cardenas by towing the disabled USS Winslow out of range from Spanish artillery. Three sailors aboard Winslow received the Navy Medal of Honor for their actions during the battle, but because at the time members of the Revenue Cutter Service were not eligible for the Medal of Honor, Congress approved a special medal struck for them. First Lieutenant Frank Newcomb, the commanding officer of Hudson, received the medal in gold, his officers received it in silver, and the enlisted crewmen in bronze 14. United States Life Saving Service at its source. Seal of the United States Life Saving Service. A number of voluntary organizations had formed in coastal communities in the 1700s and early 1800s to assist shipwrecked mariners by means of small boats at shore based stations, notably the Massachusetts Humane Society which was established in 1786-15 these stations were normally unoccupied, essentially storehouses for boats and equipment to be used by volunteers. With the signing of the Newell Act on August 14, 1848, Congress appropriated $10,000 to fund life-saving stations along the East Coast 1617 these were loosely administered by the Revenue Marine, but still dependent on volunteers 18. This system continued until February 1, 1871 when Sumner Kimball was appointed Chief of the Revenue Marine Division of the Treasury Department by Secretary of the Treasury George S. Boutwell Note 1 2021 Noble, 1994, pages 24, 25 slash Ref Congress finally formalized the organization of the division on March 3, 1875 22 Kimball convinced Congress to appropriate $200,000 to construct new stations, repair old ones, and provide full-time crews 23 shortly thereafter, in 1878, the U.S. Life Saving Service was officially organized and Kimball volunteered to lead the service 2224 Kimball held the position of superintendent until the merger of the service with the Revenue Cutter Service in 1915-25. Although the Revenue Cutter Service is perhaps more recognized as the predecessor of the Coast Guard, the Life Saving Service's legacy is apparent in many ways not the least of which is the prominence of the Coast Guard's search and rescue mission in the eyes of the public. The Coast Guard takes its unofficial search and rescue motto, you have to go out, but you don't have to come back, from the 1899 regulations of the United States Life Saving Service, which stated, In attempting a rescue the keeper will select either the boat, breeches buoy, or life car, as in his judgment is best suited to effectively cope with the existing conditions. If the device first selected fails after such trial as satisfies him that no further attempt with it is feasible, he will resort to one of the others, and if that fails, then to the remaining one, and he will not desist from his efforts until by actual trial the impossibility of effecting a rescue is demonstrated. The statement of the keeper that he did not try to use the boat because the sea or surf was too heavy will not be accepted unless attempts to launch it were actually made and failed underlining added, or unless the confirmation of the coast, as bluffs, precipitous banks, etc., is such as to unquestionably preclude the use of a boat. A number of Coast Guard traditions survive from, or pay homage to, the life-saving service as well. For example, members of the life-saving service were referred to as surfmen, and today the surfmen badge it awarded to coxswains who qualify to operate motor lifeboats in heavy surf conditions. The badge's design is similar to the life-saving service's seal. Coast Guard Academy at its source. The School of Instruction of the Revenue Cutter Service was established on July 31, 1876, near New Bedford, Massachusetts. It used USRC James C. Dobbin for its training exercises. Dobbin was replaced in 1878 with USRC Salmon P. Chase, which was specially designed for the assignment as a training cutter. 26 The School of Instruction moved to Curtis Bay, Maryland in 1900, and then again in 1910 to Fort Trumbull near New London, Connecticut 2728 The school provided a two-year premise to ship supplemented by some class work and tutoring in technical subjects. In 1903, the third year of instruction was added 29 The school was oriented to line officers, as engineers were hired directly from civilian life. In 1906, an engineering program for cadets began 29. Nevertheless, the school remained small, with 5 to 10 cadets per class. 
In 1914 the school became the Revenue Cutter Academy and with the merger of the Revenue Cutter Service and the Life Saving Service in 1915, it became the United States Coast Guard Academy. 28 In February 1929, Congress appropriated $1,750,000 for construction of buildings to be used for the Academy. The city of New London purchased the land on the Thames River and donated it to the government for use as a Coast Guard facility. Construction began in 1931 and the first cadets began occupying the new facilities in 1932-30. A fourth year of classes was added in 1932-29. Creation of the Modern Coast Guard at its source On January 28, 1915, the United States Revenue Cutter Service and the United States Lifesaving Service were merged by Act of Congress to form the United States Coast Guard 31 on the day of its creation. The Coast Guard had approximately 255 officers, 3,900 warrant officers, and enlisted men manning a headquarters, 17 regional commands, 4 depots, an academy, 25 cruising cutters, 20 harbor cutters, and 280 lifeboat stations. 32. World War I at its source. Preparation at its source. The Coast Guard's preparations for the coming war actually started before the declaration of war on 6 April 1917 33 in late 1916. The Interdepartmental Board on Coast Communications recommended that telephone communications be improved and brought to a high state of readiness all along the U.S. coastline, to include lighthouses and life saving stations as well as other government coastal facilities. 34 Sensing a need for aviation. The Coast Guard sent 3rd Lieutenant Elmer Stone to naval flight training on 21 March 1916 35 On March 22, 1917 the Commandant issued a 12-page manual titled Confidential Order No. 2, Mobilization of the U.S. Coast Guard when required to operate as a part of the U.S. Navy 33 Germany had already announced a policy of unrestricted submarine warfare on January 30, 1917 on all ships trading with its enemies and included neutral shipping as targets 36 U.S. merchant ships sunk before a declaration of war included the SS Hilton and the SS Housatonic and five others with the loss of 36 American lives. 37. Declaration of War at its Source U.S. CGC Tampa in Port On April 6, 1917, with a formal declaration of war, the Coast Guard was transferred to the operational control of the Navy. All cutters were to report to the nearest Naval District Commander and stand by for further orders 38 all normal operations were suspended with the exception of rescues pending orders from the Navy. Secretary of the Navy Josephus Daniels directed that although the Coast Guard was then a part of the Navy, that most of the administrative details, handled by Coast Guard headquarters, would not be changed. At the outset of the war the Coast Guard consisted of less than 4,000 officers and men, had 23 cruising cutters, 21 harbor cutters, 272 rescue stations and 21 cadets at the Coast Guard Academy 3940. The Coast Guard was still in a formative stage of development from the merger of the U.S. Revenue Cutter Service and the U.S. Life Saving Service. Because of this fact, there was not much interaction between the two former entities during the war. A qualified life-saving service surfman who wished to transfer to a cutter had to be reduced to ordinary seamen upon reporting because of a lack of shipboard skills. Because of this transfers were infrequent. There were no chief petty officers in the Coast Guard at this time and Coast Guard petty officers assigned to Navy ships often served under less experienced supervisors for less pay. 41 Coast Guard cutters were seen by the Navy as ready assets and were used to fill in for a rapidly expanding Navy. The Navy recognized Coast Guard officers and petty officers as the experienced mariners that they were and often put them on Navy ships to fill in for crew shortages and lack of experience. During the war, in 1918, twin sisters Genevieve and Lucille Baker of the Naval Coastal Defense Reserve became the first uniformed women to serve in the Coast Guard 42-43. Sinking of USCGC Tampa at its source during the late afternoon of September 26, 1918, U.S. CGT Tampa parted company with Convoy HG-107, which she had just escorted into the Irish Sea from Gibraltar. Ordered to put into Milford Haven, Wales, she proceeded independently toward her destination 44 at 19.30 that evening, as she transited the Bristol Channel, the warship was spotted by UB-91. 
According to the submarine war diary entry, the U-boat dived and maneuvered into an attack position, firing one torpedo out of the stern tube at 2015 from a range of about 550 meters. Minutes later, the torpedo hit Tampa and exploded portside amidships, throwing up a huge, luminous column of water 45 the cutter sank with all hands, 111 Coast Guardsmen, for U.S. Navy sailors, and 16 passengers consisting of 11 Royal Navy sailors and 5 Maritime Service Merchant Marines 46 The sinking of Tampa was the largest single loss of Coast Guard personnel in the war 47 she sank in the Bristol Channel at roughly 50 degrees 40 minutes, north 6 degree 19 W, 48. The 1920s set its source. Post-war struggle to remain a separate armed service at its source. In 1920 the House Committee on Interstate and Foreign Commerce held hearings on merging the recently created Coast Guard into the United States Navy, 49. Prohibition at its source. In the 1920s, the Coast Guard was given several former U.S. Navy four-stack destroyers to help enforce prohibition. The effort was not entirely successful due to the slowness of the destroyers. However, the mission provided many Coast Guard officers and petty officers with operational experience which proved invaluable in World War II. The Navy's epithet of hooligan Navy dates from this era, due to the Coast Guard's flexibility in enlisting men discharged from other services to rapidly expand, it has endured due to the high proportion of prior other service enlisted, and become a term of pride within the service. 1927, Mississippi River Flood at its source During the disastrous 1927, Mississippi River Flood, the Coast Guard rescued a total of 43,853 persons who they removed from perilous positions to places of safety. Additionally, they saved 11,313 head of livestock and furnished transportation for 72 persons in need of hospitalization. In all 674 Coast Guardsmen and 128 Coast Guard vessels and boats served in the relief operations 50. The 1930 S at its source. Regulation of merchant shipping at its source. The Steamboat Inspection Service was merged with the Bureau of Navigation, created in 1884, to oversee the regulation of merchant seamen, on June 30, 1932. In 1934, the passenger vessel SS Morrow Castle suffered a serious fire off the coast of New Jersey, which ultimately claimed the lives of 124 passenger and crew. The casualty prompted new fire protection standards for vessels and paved the way for that act of May 27, 1936, which reorganized and changed the name of the Bureau of Navigation and Steamboat Inspection Service to the Bureau of Marine Inspection and Navigation. Marine inspection and navigation duties under the Bureau of Marine Inspection and Navigation were temporarily transferred to the Coast Guard by executive order on February 28, 1942. This transfer of duties fit well with the Coast Guard's port safety and security missions, and was made permanent in 1946. 51. Carl von Paulsen Rescue at its source. Lieutenant Commander Carl von Paulsen set the seaplane Arcturus in a heavy sea in January 1933 off Cape Canaveral and rescued a boy adrift in a skiff. The aircraft sustained so much damage during the open water landing that it could not take off. Ultimately, Arcturus washed onto the beach and all including the boy were saved. Commander Paulsen was awarded the Gold Life-Saving Medal for this rescue, 52. Absorption of the United States Lighthouse Service at its source The United States Lighthouse Service which was the oldest government agency, dating from August 7, 1789, was absorbed by the Coast Guard on 1 July 1939-53. The 1940s at its source World War II at its source Before the American entry into World War II, cutters of the Coast Guard patrolled the North Atlantic. In January 1940 President Roosevelt directed the establishment of the Atlantic Weather Observation Service using Coast Guard cutters and U.S. Weather Bureau observers, 54. After the invasion of Denmark by Germany on April 9, 1940, President Roosevelt ordered the International Ice Patrol to continue as a legal pretext to patrol Greenland, 
whose cryolite mines were vital to refining aluminum and whose geographic location allowed accurate weather forecasts to be made for Europe 55 The Greenland Patrol was maintained by the Coast Guard for the duration of the War 56. Attack on Pearl Harbor Japanese Planes View The Coast Guard became directly involved in the First World War II attack on America in the 1941 attack on Pearl Harbor. Supporting U.S. naval forces on December 7 were the Coast Guard cutters, patrol boats, bases, stations, lighthouses, and personnel assigned to the 14th Naval District. These units included U.S. CG Titanian patrol cutters Tiger and Reliance, buoy tenders Kukui and Walnut, patrol boats CG-400, CG-403, CG-27, and CG-8, a buoy boat and the former lighthouse service Launchley who all participated in the battle shooting at several aircraft. Taney, a notable World War II-era high-endurance cutter, is the only warship still afloat today, as a museum ship in Baltimore, that was present for the attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941, although she was actually stationed in nearby Honolulu 57 Coast Guard Aviator, Lt. Frank Erickson, who later pioneered search and rescue helicopter flight, although assigned to Taney was standing watch at Ford Island before the attack then took command of an anti-aircraft battery to fight off multiple. Enemy aircraft citation needed. U.S. Coast Guard, Horse Patrol, circa 1941-45. During World War II, there was great concern about enemy vessels nearing U.S. shores, allowing adversarial forces to invade the nation. Beach patrols manned by Coast Guardsmen gained increased importance as security forces with three basic functions, to look for and report on any suspicious vessels operating in the area to report and prevent attempts of landings by the enemy, and to prevent communication between persons on shore and the enemy at sea. Patrol the shores of the United States during the War 58 On June 13, 1942 Seaman 2nd Clash John Cullen, patrolling the beach in Amagansett, New York, discovered the first landing of German saboteurs in Operation Pastorius. Cullen was the first American who actually came in contact with the enemy on the shores of the United States during the war and his report led to the capture of the German sabotage team. For this, Cullen received the Legion of Merit, 59. USCGC Modoc was peripherally involved in the chase and sinking of the German battleship Bismarck. Shortly after Germany declared war on the United States, German submarines began Operation Drumbeat, Pockenschlag, sinking ships off the American coast and in the Caribbean. On March 15, 1942, USCGC Acacia, while en route from Curaçao to Antigua, was attacked and sunk by U-161 approximately 150 miles south of Port-au-Prince, all hands were rescued with no loss of life 6061. Many Coast Guard cutters were involved in rescue operations following German attacks on American shipping. USCGC Icarus, a 165-foot, 50M, cutter that previously had been a rum runner chaser during Prohibition, sank U-352 on May 9, 1942, off the coast of Cape Lookout, North Carolina, and took 33 prisoners, the first Germans taken in combat by any U.S. force. USCGC Thetis sank U-157 on June 10, 1942. During the war, Coast Guard units sank 12 German and 2 Japanese submarines and captured 2 German surface vessels. When USCGC Campbell rammed and sank the German U-606, her enlisted mascot Sinbad became a public hero at home and brought attention to the role of the Coast Guard in convoy protection. The Coast Guard had 30 Edsel-class destroyer escorts under its command that were used primarily for convoy escort duty in the Atlantic 62 other United States Navy ships under Coast Guard command included 63. 75 patrol frigates. 8 flower-class corvettes. 22 troop ships, 20 amphibious cargo ships, 9 attack transports, 76 landing ship, tank, 28 landing craft infantry, 18 gasoline tankers, 10 submarine chasers, 40 yard patrol boats. In addition to anti submarine operations, 64 the Coast Guard worked closely with the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps. Many of the coxswains of Coast Guard operated American landing craft, such as the Higgins boat, LCVP, used in amphibious invasions were Coast Guardsmen who had received amphibious training with the cooperation of the U.S. Marine Corps.
Coast Guard cutters and ships partially crewed by Coast Guardsmen were used in the North African invasion of November 1942, Operation Torch, and the invasion of Sicily in 1943, Operation Husky. Coast Guard crews staffed 22 tankers, 51 large tugs, 6 marine repair ships, and 209 freight and supply vessels for the United States Army 63. On September 9, 1942 U.S. CGC Muskegat was sunk by U-755 with a loss of 116 crew members, one public health service physician, and four civilian weather service personnel while on North Atlantic Weather Patrol. In November 1942, legislation was passed creating the Coast Guard Women's Reserve, also known as the SPARS. Led by Captain Dorothy C. Stratton, around 11,000 women served in various stateside positions, freeing men for overseas duty. USC On February 3, 1943 the torpedoing of the transport SS Dorchester off the coast of Greenland saw cutters Comanche and Escanaba respond. The frigid water gave the survivors only minutes to live in the cold North Atlantic. With this in mind, the crew of Escanaba used a new rescue technique when pulling survivors from the water. This retriever technique used swimmers clad in wet suits to swim to victims in the water and secure a line to them so they could be hauled onto the ship. Escanaba saved 133 men and Comanche saved 9752 Escanaba herself was lost to a torpedo or mine a few months later, along with 103 of her 105 men crew 65. Into the During the Normandy invasion of June 6, 1944, a 60-cutter flotilla of wooden 83-foot, 25M, Coast Guard cutters, nicknamed the Matchbox Fleet, cruised off all five landing beaches as combat search and rescue boats, saving 400 Allied airmen and sailors. Division 01, including the Coast Guard crewed USS Samuel Chase, landed the U.S. Army's 1st Infantry Division on Omaha Beach. Off Utah Beach, the Coast Guard crewed the command ship USS Bayfield. Several Coast Guard crewed landing craft were lost during D-Day to enemy fire and heavy seas. In addition, a cutter was beached during the storms off the Normandy coast which destroyed the U.S. operated Mulberry Harbor. A number of the 60 cutters based in Poole as part of Rescue Flotilla 1. On August 27, 1944, the Ulcoast Coast Guard crewed USS LSD-327 was torpedoed, but not sunk by U-92 while crossing the English Channel. 22 Coast Guardsmen were killed. On September 12, 1944, SS George ADE, a Liberty ship, was torpedoed by a German U-boat off Cape Hatteras, and DOTC 6667 USCGT Jackson and USCGT Bedlow, heading to assist the crew of George ADE, were caught in the Great Atlantic Hurricane of 1944 the day after sinking both cutters and killing 47 Coast Guardsmen 6667 Note 2 A U.S. Navy seaplane rescued the survivors 6667. On January 29, 1945, USS Serpens, a Coast Guard crewed Liberty ship, exploded off Guadalcanal, Solomon's Islands, while loading depth charges. 193 Coast Guardsmen, 56 Army stevedores, and one U.S. Public Health Service officer were killed in the explosion. This was the biggest single disaster to befall the Coast Guard during the War 68. As was common during this period, many of Hollywood's able-bodied screen stars became enlistees and left their film careers on hiatus in order to support the national defense. Specifically, actors Gig Young, Cesar Romero, and Richard Cromwell all served admirably in various capacities in the USCG in the Pacific for several years. The ANP Air Huntington Hartford also served in the Pacific as a Commander 69. Douglas Monroe Edit Source U.S. Coast Guard personnel evacuating U.S. Marines from near Point Cruz on Guadalcanal under fire during Second Battle of the Matanico River. Signalman First Class Douglas Monroe, 1919-1942, the only Coast Guardsman to receive the Medal of Honor earned the decoration posthumously during World War II as a small boat coxswain during the Battle of Guadalcanal in 1942. A Navy destroyer escort, USS Douglas A. Monroe, DE-422, was named in his honor in 1944. The cutter USCGC Douglas Monroe, WHEC-724, was commissioned in 1971 and is still on active service.
The Cutter USCGC Monroe, WMSL 755, was commissioned in 2017 and is on active service. Bermuda, Sky Queen, Rescue at its Source On October 14, 1947, the American-owned Boeing 314 flying boat Bermuda Sky Queen, carrying 69 passengers was flying from Foynes, Ireland to Gander, Newfoundland. Gale force winds had slowed her progress and she was running low on fuel. Too far from Newfoundland and unable to make it back to Ireland, the captain, Charles Martin, 26-year-old Dex Navy pilot, decided to fly toward USCGC Bib, WPG-31, which was on Ocean Station Charlie in the North Atlantic. The plane's captain decided to ditch and have his passengers and crew picked up by Bib. In 30-foot, 10M, seas, the transfer was both difficult and dangerous. Initially the Bibs. Captain, Captain Paul B. Cronk, tried to pass a line to the plane which taxied to the lee side of the cutter. A collision with the cutter ended this attempt to save the passengers. With worsening weather, a 15-man rubber raft and a small boat were deployed from the ship. The raft was guided to the escape door of the aircraft. Passengers jumped into the raft which was then pulled to the boat. After rescuing 47 of the passengers, worsening conditions and the approach of darkness forced the rescue suspension. By dawn, improved weather allowed the rescue to resume and the remaining passengers and crew were transferred to the Bib. The rescue made headlines throughout the country and upon their arrival in Boston, Bib and her crew received a hero's welcome for having saved all those aboard the ditched Bermuda Sky Queen 5270. This event spurred ratification of the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO, treaty establishing a network of ocean weather stations in 1947. A second conference in 1949 reduced the number of Atlantic stations to 10 but provided for three Pacific stations, 54. Enlisted Training Center Edit Source an enlisted training center was established in Cape May in 1948 and all recruit training functions were consolidated in this facility in 1982, when the West Coast Recruit Center at Government Island, Alameda, California was closed, the facility repurposed and the island renamed. Sea Coast Guard Island The 1950s Edit Source Korean War Edit Source During the Korean War, Coast Guard officers helped arrange the evacuation of the Korean Peninsula during the initial North Korean attack. On August 9, 1950, Congress enacted Public Law 679, known as the Magnuson Act. This act charged the Coast Guard with ensuring the security of the United States ports and harbors on a permanent basis. In addition, the Coast Guard established a series of weather ships in the North Pacific Ocean and assisted civilian and military aircraft in ships in distress and established a string of Lawrence stations in Japan and Korea that assisted the United Nations forces. Pendleton Rescue at its source Main article, SS Pendleton Bow section of the Pendleton, February 19, 1952 On February 18, 1952, during a severe nor'easter off the New England coast, the T-2 tankers SS Fort Mercer and SS Pendleton broke in half. Pendleton was unable to make any distress call, she was discovered on the unusual shore radar with which the Chatham, Massachusetts, lifeboat station was equipped, during the search for Fort Mercer 71. Bosun's mate 1st Class Bernard C. Weber, coxswain of Coast Guard Motor Lifeboat CG36500 from Station Chatham, and his crew, consisting of Engineman 3rd Class Andrew Fitzgerald, Seaman Richard Livesey, and Seaman Irvin Mask, rescued the crew from Pendleton's stern section, with Pendleton broken in half. Weber maneuvered the 36-footer under Pendleton's stern with expert skill as the tanker's crew, trapped in the stern section, abandoned the remains of their ship on a Jacob's ladder. One by one, the men jumped into the water and then were pulled into the lifeboat. Weber and his crew saved 32 of the 41 Pendleton crewmen. Weber, Fitzgerald, Livesey, and Mask were awarded the Gold Life-Saving Medal for their heroic actions 71. In all, U.S. Coast Guard vessels, aircraft, and lifeboat stations, working under severe winter conditions, rescued 62 persons from the foundering ships or from the water. Five Coast Guardsmen earned the Gold Life-Saving Medal, 
4 earned the Silver Life Saving Medal, and 15 earned the Coast Guard Commendation Medal 52. The rescue of men from the bow of Fort Mercer was nearly as spectacular as the Pendleton Rescue, though often overshadowed by the Pendleton Rescue. Nine officers and crew were trapped on the bow of Fort Mercer, of whom four were successfully rescued using rafts and a Monomoy surfboat. Less dramatically, all the men of the stern were also rescued and the Fort Mercer stern was eventually towed back to shore and rebuilt, with a new bow, as the San Jacinto 72. The first of the Coast Guard's Sentinel-class cutters, USCGC Bernard C. Weber, was named in BM-1 Weber's Honor 73. The rescues are portrayed in the 2016 motion picture The Finest Hours, based on the 2009 book by the same title. The 1960s Edit Source Transfer to the Department of Transportation Edit Source on April 1, 1967 the Coast Guard was transferred from the Department of the Treasury to the newly formed Department of Transportation under the authority of PL 89-670 which was signed into law on October 15, 1966. The Racing Stripe had its source. In 1967, the Coast Guard adopted the red and blue racing stripe as part of the regular insignia for cutters, boats, and aircraft. It was recommended by the industrial design firm of Raymond Lowy slash William Snaith Incorporated to give Coast Guard units and vessels a distinctive appearance, as well as clearer recognition from a distance 74. This racing stripe was in turn adopted, in modified forms, by several other Coast Guards, in particular the Canadian Coast Guard. Vietnam or at its source. USCGC Duane, WHEC 33. Shelling targets in Vietnam circa 1967. Squadron, one unit patch. The Coast Guard was active in the Vietnam War beginning May 27, 1965, with the formation of Coast Guard Squadron 1, consisting of Divisions 11 and 12. Squadron 1 assisted in Operation Market Time by interdicting resupply by sea of Viet Song and North Vietnamese forces. The Coast Guard developed a piggyback weapon that proved highly useful an M2 Browning machine gun placed over a 81mm mortar 75 17-point class 82-foot WPB cutters were transferred to coastal waters off Vietnam with their Coast Guard crews under the operational control of the U.S. Navy 7th Fleet. The 1st 8 Squadron 1 cutters arrived at Da Nang on July 20 and were designated Division 1276 Division 11 consisting of the remaining 9 cutters arrived at Noi on August 1. 76 Division 13 consisting of nine additional WPBs arrived for duty at Cat Low on 22 February 1966 77 Squadron 1 cutters were awarded the Navy Presidential Unit Citation for their assistance provided the Navy during Operation Sea Lords Coast Guard Squadron 3 was established on April 24, 1967 in support of Operation Market Time and consisted initially of five high-endurance cutters, WHEC, tasked to the 7th Fleet for use in coastal interdiction and naval gunfire support for shore operations in South Vietnam. The first five cutters arrived on 4 May 78. Several Coast Guard aviators served with the U.S. Air Force 37th Aerospace Rescue and Recovery Squadron and 40th Aerospace Rescue and Recovery Squadron in Southeast Asia from 1968 to 1972. They were involved in combat search and rescue operations in both Vietnam and Laos 79. The Coast Guard provided Explosive Loading, Detachments, ELD, to the U.S. Army 1st Logistics Command in several locations in Vietnam. The ELDs were responsible for the supervision of Army stevedores and the unloading of explosives and ammunition from U.S. Merchant Marine ships. The ELDs were also responsible for assisting the Army in port security operations at each port and eventually were made a part of a port security and waterways detail, PSNWD, reporting to the Commanding General, United States Army, Vietnam, USARF. They earned the Army Meritorious Unit Commendation for their efforts. On December 13, 1965 Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara requested Coast Guard assistance in constructing a chain of Lawrence stations for use by naval vessels and combat aircraft for operations in Southeast Asia 80 construction started almost immediately at five locations in Thailand and Vietnam and they were fully operational on 28 October 1966-81. On April 22, 1966, USCGC Plaintree, 
WLB-307, arrived in Cameron Bay to commence aids to navigation at an, operations in the coastal waters of South Vietnam. She was responsible for the marking of freshly cut channels and harbors with buoys and daymarks so that merchant and naval ships could safely navigate the waters. This direct support mission ended on May 17, 1971 with the departure of the last buoy tender, USCGC Blackhawk, WLB-390. The buoy tender crews were tasked with training South Vietnamese crews in the Aden effort prior to the departure of the Blackhaw as a part of the Vietnamization policy of the Nixon administration. After May 1971 Aten was serviced on as needed basis by USCGC Basswood, WLB 388, home port in Guam. In August 1970 the Coast Guard finished turning over to the South Vietnamese Navy the patrol boats of Squadron 1. The training of South Vietnamese crews had started in February 1969 and continued through to the end of operations for Squadron 1. USCGC Yakutat, WHEC-380, and USCGC Bering Strait, WHEC-382, were turned over to the South Vietnamese Navy on January 1, 1971. Eventually, three other WACs were turned over to the South Vietnamese Navy. The Coast Guard's involvement in the Vietnam War ended at 12.46 local time April 29, 1975, when Lawrence Station Consun went off the air for good. Its signal was necessary for the safe evacuation of Saigon by U.S. Embassy personnel in the final days before the fall of the South Vietnamese government and it was kept on the air as long as possible 82 on October 3, 1975 the Coast Guard disestablished the remaining Lawrence Sea stations in Thailand 83. Seven Coast Guardsmen were killed during the war in combat and search and rescue operations 84 additional. The U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs has determined that Coast Guard veterans who served aboard designated vessels while deployed to Vietnam during the war are eligible for the presumption of Agent Orange herbicide exposure. 85 The vessels include U.S. Coast Guard patrol boats, WPBs, high endurance cutters, WECs, buoy tenders, WLBs, and cargo vessels, WAKs. 85 The 1970s edit source. The New Guard edit source. In the mid-70s the Coast Guard adopted the blue uniforms seen today, replacing Navy-style uniforms worn prior to the Vietnam War 86 known jocularly as Bender's Blues, they were implemented as part of the post-war transition to an all-volunteer force. It is noteworthy that the enlisteds and officers' uniforms differed only in rank insignia and cap devices, reflecting the value the service placed on its enlisted members, although it caused saluting confusion among members of other services. The stylish new women's uniform was created by Hollywood costume designer Edith Head, upon the request of Captain Eleanor L. Acquire, 87. Enlisted uniform buttons were gold while officers' buttons were silver. This was just opposite of most military services. Women were integrated into the Coast Guard during the 1970s, beginning with the end of the separate women's reserve, SPARS, in 1973. The modification of 378s for mixed-gender crews beginning in 1977, and the opening of all ratings to women in 1978. These stages of integration preceded the DoD military by roughly a year or so, as separate legislation restricted their deployment of women. 88. Altogether, the shift from Treasury to the DOT in 1967, the uniform change, the end of ocean station service, growth of the shoreside establishment by newly added missions, the steady, if belated retirement of venerable but aging World War II cutters, and gender integration marked the oft-lamented end of the old guard, wooden ships, and men of steel. The ancient order of the pterodactyl was founded in 1977 in order to preserve the history of Coast Guard aviation, as the service's last amphibious seaplane, the Grumman Albatross, or GOAT, was nearing retirement, as was also the service's last enlisted pilot, John P. Greathouse 8990. End of ocean stations, beginning of the 200 nautical miles, 370 kilometers, limit at its source. One major mission of the service, maintaining ocean stations, came to an end as improvements in oceanic aviation, turbojet airliners, and improved radio navigation, obviated the need. However, the Magnuson-Stevens Fisheries Conservation and Management Act of 1976 brought an increase in offshore fisheries patrols, to which the newer WECs, the 378s, were redeployed, 
as the aging boiler-powered World War II vintage wooden deckers were gradually retired. The Kadurka incident at its source. Wika source has original text related to this article. President Ford Memkin, September 5, 1974. On November 23, 1970, Simonis Simus Kadurka, a Soviet seaman of Lithuanian nationality, left from the 400-foot, 120M, mothership, Sovetskaya Lithu, anchored in American waters, near Aquinnah, Massachusetts on Martha's Vineyard Island, aboard the U.S. CTC Benjamin, sailing from New Bedford. The Soviets accused Kadurka of theft of 3,000 rubles from the ship sank. Ten hours passed, communications difficulties contributed to the delay, as the ship was unfortunately in a blind spot of Boston radios, marshal, receivers, resulting in an awkward resort to using the public marine operator. After attempts to get the U.S. State Department to provide guidance failed, Rear Admiral William B. Ellis, commander of the 1st Coast Guard District, ordered Commander Ralph e. Eustace to permit a KGB detachment to board the Vigilant to return Kadurka to the Soviet ship. This led to a change in asylum policy by the U.S. Coast Guard. Admiral Ellis and his chief of staff were given administrative punishment under Article 15 of the UCMJ. Commander Eustace was given a non-punitive letter of reprimand and assigned to shore duty. Kadurka himself was tried for treason by the Soviet Union and given a 10-year sentence in prison. Subsequent investigations revealed that Kadurka could claim American citizenship through his mother and he was allowed to go to the United States in 1974. The incident, known for several years as the Coast Guard's Day of Shame, was portrayed in a 1978 television movie, The Defection of Simus Kadurka, with Alan Arkin playing Kadurka and Donald Pleasance playing the captain of the Soviet ship and USCGC Decisive playing the part of USCGC Vigilant. It was also portrayed in the 1973 book Day of Shame, the truth about the murderous happenings aboard the Cutter Vigilant during the Russian-American confrontation off Martha's Vineyard by Algis Ruxinas 91. The Rescue of AF-586 at its source. At 14.30 on October 26, 1978, Alpha Foxtrot 586, an ADP-3C flying with a crew of 15 on a reconnaissance mission from the BP-9 detachment at Naval Station 8 at Alaska, ditched near position. 52 degrees 39 minutes north 167 degrees 24 minutes east, approximately 290 miles west of Shemya Island in the Aleutians, following a propeller malfunction and succession of engine fires in its number one engine. BP-9's aircraft accident report recorded conditions at the time of ditching as 1,500-foot ceiling, 1 and 1 half to 3 miles visibility in rain showers, wave height 12 to 20 feet, winds 223 degrees at 43 knots. Water temperature was approximately 40 degrees. The aircraft sank within 90 seconds, 92. The crew of Coast Guard HC-130 HCGNR-1500 were instrumental in saving the lives of 10 crew members from Navy T-3C P-2 Alpha Foxtrot 586, Bureau Number 159892, after that aircraft ditched in the North Pacific Ocean west of Shemya Island on October 26, 1978. Arriving on scene after dark and turbulent weather, CG-1500 marked the reported position of the survivor's rafts with a buoy and smoke floats, proceeded to and established communications with a Soviet fishing vessel, Mycenaeum, located approximately 25 miles west of Dayton, and then directed that vessel to both rafts, ultimately resulting in the rescue of 10 survivors and the recovery of three dead crew members from AF-586. The latter died from exposure after approximately 10. 12 hours in the water-laden rafts, and it is unlikely that the other 10 crew members could have survived in their rafts much longer as they were all in the advanced stages of hypothermia when rescued by Mycenaeum in 93. The 1980s Edit Source The Blackthorn Tragedy Edit Source On January 28, 1980, the 180-foot buoy tender USCGC, Blackthorn, WLB-391, collided with the 605-foot-tall tanker SS Capricorn and capsized when the Capricorn's anchor entangled the cutter. 23 Coast Guardsmen were drowned. Coming close behind the loss of 11 men in the collision, slash sinking of the OCS training ship USCGD Cuyahoga, the impact of this disaster upon morale in the close-knit service was magnified 94. 
Princendon, rescue at its source. On October 4, 1980, the Coast Guard and Canadian Coast Guard were involved in the rescue of the passengers and crew of the Dutch cruise vessel MS Princendum in the Gulf of Alaska. A fire broke out on the Princendum off Yakutat, Alaska, on October 4, 1980. The Princendum was 130 miles, 210 kilometers, from the nearest airstrip. The cruise ship's captain ordered the ship abandoned, and the passengers, many elderly, left the ship in the lifeboats. Coast Guard and Canadian helicopters and the cutters Boutwell, Mellon, and Woodrush responded in concert with other vessels in the area. The passenger vessel later capsized and sank. The rescue is particularly important because of the distance traveled by the rescuers, the coordination of independent organizations and the fact that all 520 passengers and crew were rescued without loss of life or serious injury 52. Marine Electric Sinking at its Source On February 12, 1983, the cargo ship SS Marine Electric sank in a storm off the coast of Virginia. Despite efforts by multiple Coast Guard and Navy vessels, most of the crew were lost. As a result of this, the Coast Guard undertook massive review of its rescue procedures, its ship inspection procedures, and its requirements for safety equipment aboard ships. 95. Some of the reforms that resulted included the items below. 95. Greater attention to inspection of deck hatch covers during ship inspections. Requirement for all ships to provide equipment for survival in cold water for all ships crew personnel. The establishment of the Coast Guard Rescue Swimmer Program in 1984, in order to greatly improve readiness and training for all rescue swimmers. The Mariel Boatlift at its source. In April 1980, the government of Cuba began to allow any person who wanted to leave Cuba to assemble in Mariel Harbor and take their own transport. The U.S. Coast Guard, working out of 7th District Headquarters in Miami, Florida, rescued boats in difficulty, inspected vessels for adequate safety equipment, and processed refugees. This task was made even more difficult by a hurricane, which swamped many vessels in mid-ocean and by the lack of cooperation by Cuban Border Guard officials. By May, 600 reservists had been called up, the U.S. Navy provided assistance between Cuba and Key West, and the auxiliary was heavily involved. 125,000 refugees were processed between April and May 1980. See Mariel, boat lift. The end of the lightship set its source. The number of lightships steadily decreased during the 20th century, some replaced by Texas Tower-type structures, example Chesapeake, Buzzards Bay, both now automated, 1-2, and others by buoys. However, the Columbia River and Nantucket Shoals lightships were not replaced by large navigational buoys LNBs, until 1979 and 1983, respectively, due to the difficulty of anchoring buoys securely at their heavy weather locations. 3. 4. The technology of all aids to navigation evolved dramatically during this era, reducing manning and maintenance requirements. The Coast Guard also managed the worldwide VLF Omega navigation system and operated two of its stations from the early 1970s until its termination in 1997, having been superseded, though not truly obsoleted, by GPS. Drug war at sea escalates at its source. During the 1980s, Coast Guard cutters and aircraft were increasingly deployed to intervene drugs far offshore. While the service has interdicted contraband since its inception, the drug war was the biggest effort since Prohibition. Though the drug war began before the 1980s and continues to this day, it was during the 1980s that the Coast Guard, working with the Drug Enforcement Administration and other law enforcement agencies, used a blend of new and old laws to interdict far from the shores of the United States. Formerly, it was more difficult to prosecute cases involving seizures made beyond 24 nautical miles from shore. President Ronald Reagan's efforts to secure funding for federal agencies and courts to prosecute cases got the Coast Guard's attention citation needed. The Coast Guard instituted a no-tolerance policy toward drugs, began testing its own employees for drug use, and required that all boardings be carried out by trained and armed boarding officers and petty officers. 
The Caribbean was the focus of efforts in the 1980s, but in recent years the major drug busts at sea have been occurring more in the waters of the Pacific Ocean between California and Peru. Libyan attack on Lawrence Station, Lampedusa at its source. On April 15, 1986, Libya fired two scuds at the U.S. Coast Guard radio navigation station on the Italian island of Lampedusa, in retaliation for the American bombing of Tripoli and Benghazi. However, the missiles passed over the island, landing in the sea, and caused no damage. As a result of the attack, the Coast Guard station was commissioned as a NATO base, including security hardening and an armory, as well as an Italian security detail station nearby. Exxon Valdez oil spill at its source. In March 1989, the oil tanker Exxon Valdez struck Prince William Sound's Bly Reef and spilled 260,000 to 750,000 barrels, 41,000 to 119,000 cubic meters, of crude oil. Because the incident took place in navigational waters, the Coast Guard had authority for all activities relating to the cleanup effort. The Coast Guard largely served as the federal on-scene coordinator between ExxonMobil and all of these organizations, acting within authority under the Clean Water Act. Coast Guard cutters were one of the first to respond to the spill, quickly establishing a safety zone around the stricken Exxon Valdez. At least 11 cutters were present in April 1989, the majority of them overseeing booing and skimming operations. Early that month, Coast Guard vessel activity went through a rapid build-up phase. The Coast Guard maintained a heavy cutter presence for two weeks in mid-April and then reduced it towards the end of the month. Four or five cutters were on hand in early May and that number was reduced to two or three by the end of the month. Three cutters were assigned to clean up operations by the beginning of June, but only one remained two weeks later, and it stayed that way for the remainder of the 1989 response. Several C-130s from Coast Guard Air Station Kodiak airlifted more than 11 and 1 fourth tons of cleanup equipment by April 10, 1989. HE-25 Falcon jets from Coast Guard Air Station Cape Cod flew twice a day tracking oil with side-looking radar equipment. Five Coast Guard helicopters also assisted 39 skimmers working in Prince William Sound 5. The 1990s at its source. 90 Operation Desert Shield at its source. Members of Port Security Unit 302 patrol the harbor aboard a Navy Harbor Patrol boat during Operation Desert Shield. On August 17, 1990, at the request of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the Secretary of Transportation and the Commandant of the Coast Guard committed Coast Guard Law Enforcement Detachments Redet, to Operation Desert Shield. A total of 10 four-person teams served in theater to support the enforcement of UN sanctions by the Maritime Interdiction Forces. Approximately 60% of the 600 boardings carried out by U.S. forces were either led by or supported with the Ladettes. Additionally, a seven-man liaison staff was designated by the Commandant as Operational Commander for the Coast Guard Forces deployed in theater. The first boarding of an Iraqi vessel in the theater of operations conducted by a Ladette occurred on August 30, 1990. President George H. W. Bush, on August 22, 1990, authorized the call-up of members of the Selected Reserve to active duty in support of Operation Desert Shield. Three port security units, PSU, consisting of 550 Coast Guard reservists, are ordered to the Persian Gulf in support of Operation Desert Shield. This was the first involuntary overseas mobilization of Coast Guard Reserve PSUs in the Coast Guard Reserve's 50-year history. A total of 950 Coast Guard reservists were called to active duty. 96. 91 Operation Desert Storm at its source. Prior to the launch of Operation Desert Storm, Coast Guard Ladette personnel aboard the USS Nicholas, FFG-47, assisted when the frigate cleared 11 Iraqi oil platforms and took 23 prisoners on January 18, 1991. Edit Source 90 Operation Desert Shield Edit Source Members of Port Security Unit 302 patrol the harbor aboard a Navy Harbor Patrol boat during Operation Desert Shield. On August 17, 1990, at the request of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, 
the Secretary of Transportation and the Commandant of the Coast Guard committed Coast Guard Law Enforcement Detachments, LADET, to Operation Desert Shield. A total of 10 four-person teams served in theater to support the enforcement of UN sanctions by the Maritime Interdiction Forces. Approximately 60% of the 600 boardings carried out by U.S. forces were either led by or supported with the Ladettes. Additionally, a seven-man liaison staff was designated by the Commandant as Operational Commander for the Coast Guard forces deployed in theater. The first boarding of an Iraqi vessel in the theater of operations conducted by a Ladette occurred on August 30, 1990. President George H. W. Bush, on August 22, 1990, authorized the call-up of members of the selected reserve to active duty in support of Operation Desert Shield. Three port security units, PSU, consisting of 550 Coast Guard reservists, are ordered to the Persian Gulf in support of Operation Desert Shield. This was the first involuntary overseas mobilization of Coast Guard Reserve PSUs in the Coast Guard Reserve's 50-year history. A total of 950 Coast Guard reservists were called to active duty. 96. 91 Operation Desert Storm met its source. Prior to the launch of Operation Desert Storm, Coast Guard Ladette personnel aboard the USS Nicholas, FFG-47, assisted when the frigate cleared 11 Iraqi oil platforms and took 23 prisoners on January 18, 1991. On April 21, 1991, a tactical port security boat, TPSB, of PSU-301, stationed in Al Jubail, Saudi Arabia, was the first boat in the newly reopened harbor of Mina Ash-Shawake in Kuwait City. Because of certain security concerns, a determination was made to send one of the 22-foot Raider boats belonging to PSU-301 and armed with M2 and M60 machine guns, to lead the procession into the harbor and provide security for the Operation 96. During the war, Saddam Hussein's Iraqi army was seeking to pollute the Persian Gulf by pouring oil into an, an effort only partly stymied when Air Force F-111 F aardvarks bombed the source of the deliberate spill. A giant slick was spreading rapidly, wreaking environmental havoc and threatening Saudi desalinization plants that supplied potable water for coalition troops. Two HU-25B Guardians from Coast Guard Air Station Cape Cod, Massachusetts, were dispatched February 13, 1991 supported by two HC-130H Hercules from CGAS Clearwater, Florida, operating from Saudi and Bahraini airfields. The HC-130S brought in supplies and returned to the United States February 25. The HU-25BS flew over the oil spill to monitor dispersion, rate of flow, the effects of weather and currents, and other data essential for preparing a response plan 97. Operation Buckshot, the Great Flood of 93 at its source, during April and again in June 1993, Coast Guard Forces St. Louis, CGF, was activated for flooding on the Mississippi, Missouri, and Illinois River basins. The 500-year flooding closed over 1,250 miles 2, kilometers, of river to navigation and claimed 47 lives. Historic levels of rainfall in the river tributaries caused many levee breaks along the Missouri and Mississippi rivers displacing thousands of people from their homes and businesses. The commander of CGF St. Louis set into motion a preconceived operations plan to deal with the many requests for assistance from state and local governments for law enforcement assistance, help with sandbagging, water rescues, evacuation of flood victims, and aerial surveillance of levee conditions. The unprecedented duration of the flood also caused Coast Guard personnel to assume some humanitarian services not normally a part of flood operations. Food, water, and sandbags were transported to work sites to assist sandbagging efforts by local governments. Red Cross and Salvation Army relief workers were given transportation assistance. Many homeless animals displaced by the flood waters were rescued and turned over to local animal shelters. Utility repair crews were assisted with transportation of personnel and repair parts. Disaster response units, DRU, were formed from active duty and reserve units throughout the 2nd Coast Guard District and consisted of eight members equipped with three 16-foot flood punts powered by 25-horsepower outboard motors. The DRUs accounted for 15 17-boat sorties and 3,342 hours of underway operations. 
Coast Guard helicopters from CG Air Stations in Traverse City and Detroit, Michigan, Chicago, Illinois, Elizabeth City, North Carolina, and Mobile, Alabama provided search and rescue, logistical support, and aerial survey intelligence. The Coast Guard Auxiliary provided three fixed-wing aircraft. There were 473 aircraft sorties with 570 hours of aircraft operations. CGF St. Louis stood down from the alert phase of operations on August 27. A total of 380 active duty, 352 reserve, 179 auxiliary, and 5 Coast Guard civilians were involved in the operation. 98. 1994 Cuban boat rescues at its source. USCGC Tamaroa, WMEC-166, best known for her rescues during the perfect storm of 1991. In 1994, about 38,000 Cubans attempted to sail from Cuba to Florida, many on homemade rafts. The Coast Guard and Navy performed intensive search and rescue efforts to rescue rafters at sea. 16 110-foot, 34M, cutters, half the complement of the Coast Guard, were involved in this operation, as well as buoy tenders not normally assigned to high seas duty. Due to a change in presidential policy, rescued Cubans were sent to the U.S. Naval Station at Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. 1999, Kosovo at its source. In the summer of 1999, U.S. CGC Bear, WMEC 901, deployed to the Adriatic Sea in support of Operation Allied Force and Operation Noble Anvil with the USS Theodore Roosevelt, CVN-71, battle group providing surface surveillance and SAR response for the Sea Combat Commander, and force protection for the amphibious ready group operating near Albania. The Bear also provided security to the US Army vessels transporting military cargo between Italy and Albania. This escort operation took Bear up to the Albanian coastline, well with an enemy surface-to-surface -surface missile range. Bear earned the Kosovo Campaign Medal and the NATO Kosovo Medal 6. The 2000s at its source. For details on the Coast Guard's response to the September 11, 2001 attacks, see missions of the United States Coast Guard above. Transfer to the Department of Homeland Security at its source. The Coast Guard was transferred from the Department of Transportation to the Department of Homeland Security on March 1, 2003, under the Homeland Security Act, Public Law No. 107 296. In 2002, the Coast Guard sent several 110 foot, 34 M, cutters to the Persian Gulf to enforce the UN embargo on goods to and from Iraq. Port security units and naval coastal warfare units also accompanied the U.S. military buildup. Wars in Iraq and Afghanistan at its source. U.S. Coast Guard, Port Security Unit patrols UMM Khazar. During Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation Enduring Freedom, the Coast Guard had deployed its largest contingent of Coast Guardsmen and assets overseas since the Vietnam War. Coast Guard cutters primarily assisted in force protection and search and seizures of suspected smugglers in Iraqi and international waters often in close proximity to Iran 99 military trainers improved the capabilities of the Iraqi Navy and other government forces in core competencies and maritime law enforcement. The Coast Guard also sent military advisors to Iraq to provide technical assistance to Iraqi officials on the implementation of international port security standards and requirements 100 the US CDC Walnut, WLB 205, conducted an assessment of Iraq's river and coastal navigational aids, such as buoys, and then replaced or corrected the aids in order to allow for the safe navigation of the Korabi Diyala River flowing up to the port of UMM Khazar for military, humanitarian, and commercial vessels. 101. USCG raid team members sent to inspect cargo containers for proper loading and labeling of hazardous materials. The Coast Guard sent redeployment assistance and inspection detachment, raid, teams to both Iraq and Afghanistan. The teams assisted the units of other services with the proper declaration, classification, labeling and packaging of container shipments as well as the inspection of containers for structural integrity to ensure each one is seaworthy to cut down on potential shipping problems 100 and 103 in addition, the Coast Guard provided multiple men and women as a part of intelligence and cyber detachments across Afghanistan 104. 
On April 24, 2004, Petty Officer 3rd Class Nathan B. Bruckenthal, 24, from the USS Firebolt, PC-10, became the first Coast Guardsman to die in a combat zone since the Vietnam War. He was killed in a suicide boat attack on a Basra oil terminal off the coast of Iraq as the crew of the Firebolt performed their maritime security mission. At the height its involvement in both wars, the Coast Guard deployed over 1,200 men and women, including about 500 reservists, 11 ships, two large cutters, a buoy tender, and eight patrol boats, four port security units, law enforcement detachments, and other specialized teams and support staff in order to perform a wide range of operations in Iraq, Afghanistan, Kuwait, and the Persian Gulf 105. Coast Guard units and personnel, both active and reserve component, continue to deploy to the Middle East region even after the end of Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation New Dawn. The Coast Guard is charged with providing harbor defense and security to ports, seaward approaches, and waterways within U.S. Central Command's area of responsibility and ensuring the free flow of personnel, equipment, and commerce in the region 106. Hurricane Katrina at its source After Hurricane Katrina in August 2005, the Coast Guard dispatched a number of helicopters, fixed-wing aircraft, small boats, and auxiliary aircraft as well as 25 cutters to the Gulf Coast, rescuing 2,000 people in two days, and around 33,500 people in all. The crews also assessed storm damage to offshore oil platforms and refineries. More than 2,400 personnel from all districts conducted search, rescue, response, waterway reconstitution, and environmental impact assessment operations. In total, the Coast Guard air and boat rescued more than 33,500 people and assisted with the joint agency evacuation of an additional 9,400 patients and medical personnel from hospitals in the Gulf Coast region. In May 2006, at the change of command ceremony when Admiral Thad Allen took over as Commandant, President George W. Bush awarded the entire Coast Guard, including the Coast Guard Auxiliary, the Presidential Unit Citation for its efforts after Hurricane Katrina. HC-130 No. 1705 Crash at its Source On October 29, 2009, Coast Guard HC-130 Aircraft No. 1705 with seven crew members, based at Coast Guard Air Station Sacramento, collided with a United States Marine Corps, USMC, AH-1 Cobra helicopter with two crew members 15 miles, 24 kilometers, east of San Clemente Island. Both aircraft crashed into the ocean and all nine crew members in both aircraft are believed to have perished 107 The C-130 was searching for a missing boater, while the USMC aircraft was heading towards a military training area in company with another Cobra and two CH-53C stallions from Marine Corps Air Station Miramar 108 An investigation found no one directly responsible for the crash 109. The 2010 S at its source Deepwater Horizon Oil Spill at its Source Main Articles, Deepwater Horizon Explosion and Deepwater Horizon Oil Spill This section needs expansion. You can help by adding to it. October 2015 CG-6535 Crash at its Source a U.S. Coast Guard MH-65C Dolphin helicopter with four crew members on board crashed February 28, 2012, into Mobile Bay, Alabama. The helicopter was on a training mission out of U.S. Coast Guard Aviation Training Center Mobile Further Explanation Needed 110. The Anti-Drug Mission and the Budget at its Source Due to budget sequestration in 2013, the USCG's ability to interdict drug shipments to the United States has been made more difficult due to a lack of resources, and interdictions are down 30 percent, while untracked shipments have increased 111 United States Southern Command's traditional support for the drug mission was cut back at the same time with no USN warships assigned to the theater 112. Icebreakers at its source By 2015, Due to lack of funding allocated to the billion-dollar class of craft, the United States was operating one medium and one heavy icebreaker, down from a fleet of eight 113 the Coast Guard estimated it needs three heavy and three medium icebreakers to fulfill its mission 114 with Russia operating about 27, China preparing to launch a second, and Canada, 
Finland and Sweden operating more than the United States 115 President Obama, various lawmakers, and the FI 2017 Coast Guard. Budget requests have called for funding at least one replacement for the Polar Star, which will reach end of life by 2020. U.S. Navy Sailors Detained by Iran at its Source USCGC Monomoy, a 110-foot island-class patrol boat, received one of the first reports of the 2016 U.S. Iran naval incident and assisted in the eventual rescue of 10 American sailors, assigned to River Rhine Squadron 1, who were detained by Iranian naval forces in January 2016. A Navy second-class petty officer activated a radio beacon while at gunpoint. The signal was received by Monomoy, and information was passed to the group's parent unit, Task Force 56.7, aiding the search and rescue operation where eventually the cutter escorted the sailors to safety after they were released 116. Future at its source. The Integrated Deepwater System Program is designed to meet future threats to the U.S. from the sea. Although the program involves obtaining new ships and aircraft, Deepwater also involves upgraded information technology for command, control, communications, and computers, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, C4ISR. A key part of the Deepwater system is the Maritime Security Cutter, large, WMSL, which is designed to replace the 378-foot, 115M, high-endurance cutters currently on duty. This ship will have a length of 421 feet 128 meters, be powered by a gas turbine engine with two auxiliary diesel engines, and be capable of 12,000 nautical mile, 22,000 kilometers, voyages lasting up to 60 days. The keel laying of the USCGC Berthulf, WMSL 750, the first ship in this class, took place in September 2004. The ship was delivered in 2008. The second keel, USCGC Weishi, WMSL 751, was laid in 2005. Another key vessel is the Maritime Security Cutter, medium, WMSM, which will be 341 feet 104 meters long, displace 2,921 long tons, 2,968 metric tons, and be capable of 45-day patrols of up to 9,000 nautical miles, 17,000 kilometers. Both the WMSL and the WMSM cutters will be able to carry two helicopters or four VTOL unmanned air vehicles, WAVs, or a combination of these. Billions in cost overruns have plagued the Deepwater Program 117. The GAO and agency observers have offered several opinions for this, and some have questioned whether the USCG should invest in greater number of less sophisticated vessel and air assets rather than paying dearly for cutting-edge technology. Frank Lobiondo Coast Guard Authorization, Act of 2018 at its source. In December 2018, President Donald Trump signed Senate Bill S-140, also known as the Franklin Lobiondo Coast Guard Authorization Act of 2018-118. This legislation was proposed to approve the budget of $7.9 billion which was allocated for operating expenses for the U.S. Coastal Guard. An additional $2.6 clarification needed was authorized for the overall improvement of its infrastructure 119-120 it also authorized the active duty of 43,000 employees for 2018 and 44,500 personnel for the following year 120. Coast Guard Museum's Edit Source Coast Guard Museum Northwest Virginia Beach Surf and Rescue Museum Coast Guard Heritage Museum. See also at its source. Military History of the United States. History of the United States Army. History of the United States Navy. History of the United States Marine Corps. History of the United States Air Force. Defense of the Cutter Eagle. Notes at its source. At its source. So what did you think about the whole history about the United States Marine Corps, I mean, Coast Guard? And what do you think about my situation now? <laughs> I am stuck in a sink. I am stuck in a plane and I'm sinking to the bottom of the ocean. 
<laughs> you think I'll be able to get out of this or do you think I'll die? I'm gonna die. I'm so gonna die. <laughs> I'm gonna die. Oh, I'm dead. Oh, I'm gonna die. Oh, I'm gonna die. <laughs> Man. If I then need more water in, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really be hosed. I can't see the bottom, it's so. Then you just hit the bottom. I am gonna die. The carpet's flooded. The cop. I wish they put a distress signal on this thing. Mayday! 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 I need help! I've sunk in- I've sunk in- I, I have no idea where I am in it, but I- But I'm in a- But I'm in a plane and- But I'm in a plane and I'm sinking fast. I've actually I've already sunk. I need help.
time before I'm, before I'm dead. <laughs> oh man. I can't see where I am. I can't see it all. It's so bad. <laughs> Oh dang, I think it, I think the water level. Every time I open that door the water rises. Planes leveled. <laughs> Almost. Well, I think I might as well just end it. I die. Yeah, I die. <laughs> Just see me trapped, trapped underwater. Oh, trapped in underwater plane. Where am I? Here of all places. Where's my plane? Go here.
let's see what happens. I just died in bed. <laughs> oh man. Now that's what you call died in bed. <laughs> oh, literally. Okay, time to leave. vehicles like a spawn here. I can act oh this is a train yard. So I can actually summon trains here. Right? That looks like it. Let's see if I even have a train.
consistent. This map, this map's pretty big. Let me try, let me try something new. This is tough. I mean, what kind of mission did I... <laughs> Maybe that one Coast Guard mission, you know?
a lot of areas, locations. Well, this is going to be tough because I don't understand how this works. Tough. I'm not kidding, man. One of these days I'll make a new, I'll make something. For now I'm just trying out some stuff I got from others. back here again. Time to upgrade. Time to upgrade that system.
Let's see if I can do it. Uh, how do I add the uh, how do I add the jet on? That must be the switches. It's gotta be a key. It's gotta be a it's gotta be a way. How do I add the planes on?
And just trying to figure out how all this works just pff, gives me a headache. Let me see if there is one. SOS. What's an environment? Oh, here's something. Okay, place the This one. You know, you know, Komodo Gaming should um real should really try and get um SOS an SOS thing. No offense. Like I'm getting. Let's see, you know, it's discontinued numbers. Now, let's see with the sub assembly. Yeah. 
Oke, okay, oke. Okay. Yes, sir. Here. I would talk about Obama, but um, let's not get political. I don't want to get political. Plus, I'm running. Plus, I'm I'm running out of time. I only I only about to play this for six hour, six hours, and at the time my time's almost up. And I know you're not seeing. I know you can't see what I'm doing right now, but I'm but I'm going through the inventory.
The only place I haven't been to is the Arctic region. When you think about it. You know, I'm actually looking. I would like to. But maybe I should also get my username changed. Dang it. I can't believe no one's made a small boat. this fluid. Only 15 minutes. I know it. I like this.
Oh, and it's sinkable. Man. <laughs> it seems like these people can make... Make anything nowadays. Me? I stink. I just don't have that creativity or that... Just, I just lost it some time ago. I need help getting it back. Okay. Last fin. I know I spent a lot of the majority. I doubt I can. I don't say, I feel like, I feel like I didn't, didn't fulfill anything, but if you think I did and I made a mistake in not saving, then please tell me in the comment section below. Got that mastered. It's almost a new year. This is probably falling for small planes and, heli and large helicopters. There's the runway. Which could make it bigger. Well, what can I do in these last few minutes? Few minutes before I have to exit out, where I have to quit.
kind of like the design, though. Half Coast Guard, half half Air Force. You know, I've always wanted to be in the Air Force, but due to the fact that I was born born with high function autism, that that dream never became a reality. And I wanted to join. Like my mother did, except she was a nurse. I wanted to be a fighter pilot. Sit down. I wanted to. And my grandfather was in the army. You know, during World War Two, I think he served in the. I think he served in the. Served in the European theater. But something happened in the war. That, but I never got to meet him. He died before I was even born. But I know, I know this from my mother. If he, that if he ever saw me, met me, he would have loved me, like my grandmother did, like my ma my grandfather, mother would have. There's one thing about my father I just wish I knew more about. He did, he took this and he took it took it with him to the grave. Oh man. This is a wreck. Anyway, my grand my grandfather came back from the war a racist. I don't know what happened. No one knows. Not even my own, not even my mother or her or her siblings or his wife. But the one thing I like I liked I pr I appreciated about him. He never. He never. He never passed his racist beliefs on to any, on to anyone. Not even my own, not even my family. He kept he kept those beliefs to himself, and that's what I applaud. That's what I like about him. Oh, where's where's the bit? Where's the quarters? I'm going to bid. Said they. Oh, maybe it's in here. Yeah. Well, good night. Well, good night, guys. I'm speaking of the announce the character. Well, that might be it for this vi for this video. Well, that might be it. Well, that's a that's it for this play, play gameplay. I played six hours nonstop. That's got to be a record or something.
And anyway, when, do a favor for me. If you ever if you ever meet a Coast Guard Coast Guard soldier, be sure to give before the day ends, or at least give be sure to thank him for serving his country or a vet or a Coast Guard veteran. Oh, and um, be sure to th be sure to say happy birthday to Barack Obama when you get when you see if you ever see email if you ever you know make contact with him and tell him that I gave I gave him my regards and I really like to and I really like to meet and if you want to tell him I really like to see him someday but that but that's personal. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. Now, to, now if you made it through the whole six hours, thank thanks for watch. Thanks for watching. Now don't forget. Now don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, leave a comment down below, and share this video with as many people as you can. Friends, family, complete strangers. The possibilities are endless. And be sure. To be sure to all and share and help this video reach 100. I know it's long, but please, please endure. If you can, help share this video with as many people as you can. Friends, family, complete strangers, the possibilities are endless. Help this video reach 100 plus. plus no, wait. Even a th or better yet, 1,000 plus views. That would be that would be better. And help my channel and help my channel grow. Grow. Grow by subscribing and sharing sharing my channel with as many people as you can. Friends, family, complete strangers, the possibilities are endless. So they could subscribe too, and I could keep and I could keep the thou not only keep the thousand subscribers that I already got gotten, but also get get more. If you know what I mean. But but until then, this is Jeffrey Bartos saying two things before signing off. To all, I salute you to all those who are, to all those in the U.S. Coast Guard who have served or, or, or are continuing to serve. And to you, and happy birthday to you, U.S. President Barack Obama. He's the man. He was the man. Better than better than our current president. <laughs> but Bernie, and just and would have been good as Bernie too. Or better. Or Bernie would have, or Bernie would have been better. Anyway, until next time, this is Jeffrey Bartell signing off.